All right, hello people, I'm the dude and I just got done watching the Ninja Scroll series. Not the movie, the series. I've seen the movie. Uh, the movie is very similar to the series in feel. Got kind of a darker tone. Uh, Jubei is kind of a slacker, but a beast with a sword. <laughs> He's unstoppable. Uh, a lot of crazy ninja designs with uh, really weird, special, amorphous, you know, bodies and abilities and craziness. Just craziness. Uh, if you like the movie... You'll like the series. That's the short version. They they feel very very similar. Uh, the long version with the spoilers. Uh, the basic crux of the story is that Jubei, legendary awesomeness ninja, runs into Shigure, who's in trouble. Uh, Shigure is being pursued by two different ninja clans, and later on the shogunate, the uh, the samurai. They all want a piece of her because she's the key to this mysterious treasure. No one knows what the treasure is. No one will be specific until the very, very end of the series. Uh, but yeah, she's she's the key, and that's all they care about. They want her. And Jubei, for some, I don't know, Jubei reason, he decides to accompany her throughout the entire series and keep her safe and all this stuff. Even though he's a slacker and all he really wants to do is, like, take naps and, you know, like, wander off and be a vagabond, for some reason he sticks with Shigure the entire series and keeps her safe. Or tries to. She gets kidnapped, like, 500 times. Uh, it's really her only purpose throughout the entire story until the last episode. The last episode, her purpose changes from getting kidnapped and getting rescued to uh, a decision. Is she gonna, is she gonna open up the magical MacGuffin and become, you know, like Super Saiyan or whatever the hell? It, they're very vague about what's actually gonna happen, but apparently she's gonna get like godlike powers. This is the first big problem I have with the series. She throws it all away after everything, after the entire series. After getting kidnapped five billion times, after all of her followers who are devoted to her, they all get massacred. After she almost dies, I don't know how many times. She just throws it all away at the end. She she finally gets to the, the ancient city or whatever. And, you know, she gets to the the chamber with the, the, like, clone of herself or whatever. And she has to make the choice. And she chooses to be normal. She's like, eh, it could be Superman, or in this case, Superwoman, but nah, nah, I think I'll just be a normal person and, you know, get my ass kicked all over the place and get chased and kidnapped and almost murdered. And that sounds like fun. I mean, superpowers, not superpowers, very difficult decision there. But uh, yeah, she just decides to throw it all out the window at the end of the, at the end of the series. I hated her character. I really did. Uh, she was just, uh. <laughs> the uh, the other main characters, Jubei, Jubei's Jubei. I mean, he's sarcastic as hell, and, you know, he's unbeatable with a sword, and if anything, he uses that damn wind slash too much. Uh, if you've seen Ninja Scroll the movie, when he beats the rock guy, the guy who's, like, he's got, like, impenetrable skin, he beats him with the wind slash, he, like, does a backflip and, like, slashes his sword, and the wind cuts him in half or whatever. He uses that to beat every fucking one in this series, I kid you not. Uh, at the very least, like, 90% of the time, if he beats someone, one of the enemy ninja, it's with the wind slash. It's so overused. <laughs> he needs a, another special move or something. I mean, it's that, it, it happens a lot in anime where the, the character has one special move, right? Which is one, and they beat everyone with it. <laughs> it's the same here. It's, it's this stupid wind slash thing. I don't know what the actual name is, but that's what it is. He slashes the air, the wind, like, flies at them, and it cuts them up into pieces. He abuses the hell out of it. But uh, the other main characters, uh, Daquan, the lecherous monk guy with the googly eyes, he's back. Doesn't serve a lot of purpose. He does save Jubei in the last episode, saves his life. But other than that, he's just kind of there in the background. Uh, the thief with the dumbass haircut, he's got like this little like scrap of hair like sticking out of the front of his face. It looks ridiculous. Uh, he serves absolutely no purpose. If Daquan's only purpose is to save Jubei in the last episode, the thief has no purpose at all. When you first meet him, he steals the Dragonstone, which, uh, you need the Dragonstone and Shigure to get the prize or whatever, but he steals it in the, I think it's like the second or third episode, and then Jubei takes it back, and he should have just disappeared at that point, right? Instead, he sticks around for the entire series and does nothing. Nothing. He's always in the background doing absolutely nothing. He's always a part of every conversation contributing absolutely nothing. He's just there. <laughs> He's fucking pointless. I don't get it. Why did they not get rid of him in like episode three or whatever? I don't know. 
So those are all the main characters. The other characters are all the enemy ninjas, which are just like Ninja Scroll. They're all like crazy, ridiculous, whacked out designs with special, you know, ninja powers and shit. And they're all really cool for the most part. There's a few of them that are kind of bland. Uh, the guy with the like the the umbrella or whatever, he was pretty boring. Uh, the bat guy, he, he's like he's got like bladed wings. He was pretty boring, but the better ones are really really good. They they save the series to be honest. Uh, some of my favorites were the Parasite guy. He's, uh, he's got some Japanese name. They all have Japanese names. I can barely remember the main character's names. <laughs> I don't know what the hell his name is. His name's the Parasite guy. Uh, he has a, he has this, like, giant wormy parasite thing, like, living in his stomach. And, uh, he's trained to be a swordsman his whole life. So he can fight other swordsmen. And if he can find anyone who's better than himself, if he's, if he finds a losing, himself in a losing fight, the parasite will, like, jump out of his stomach to save him. Because if he dies, apparently the parasite dies. That's what he thinks. And uh, he keeps trying to challenge, you know, people better than him. So the parasite will jump out so he can kill it. He, he, it's really, it's this really weird story arc that just works. He has to, he has to train himself as a swordsman. So he can fight really strong swordsmen. So he'll, his life will be in danger. So the parasite will jump out of his stomach to save him. So he can kill the parasite. <laughs> And uh, Jubei ends up... I don't even know why Jubei helps him. He thinks at this point that the, the guy has killed Shigure. You know, the magical MacGuffin girl that, you know, is gonna... Everyone's after. He thinks that this guy has killed her. And he hates him for it, but he decides to help him. It makes no sense. Like, watch the episode. It makes no fucking sense at all. He should have just murdered the guy. But uh, he decides to help him, and they kind of, like, ambush the parasite. They trick it into coming out. And, and uh, Jubei uses his, like, razor, like, wire thing. Y you see it in, in, in the movie. He uses it to, like, pull his sword back to him. He uses it to, like, wrap up the parasite, and then they slash the parasite and kill it. The irony being that the parasite wasn't the parasite. The guy was the parasite. The parasite was keeping the guy alive, right? It was backwards. It was the other way around. Uh, he, he learns this too late, obviously. He spent his whole life trying to kill this thing, right? His whole life training and looking for, you know, powerful fighters and doing everything in his power to kill this thing and it's the only thing keeping him alive so he dies immediately afterward <laughs> he finally gets what he's wanted his entire life this thing's been in him since he was a small child and he finally gets it and dies immediately afterwards and realizes the error of his ways <laughs> very ironic and i loved it <clears throat> but yeah you know not very surprisingly turns out that he didn't actually kill shigure uh you know big not surprise at all in the slightest uh <laughs> If you didn't see that she, you know, see her coming back, you know, still being alive, then you know you got blinders on. Uh, another one of the really cool characters was uh, Juri and Rengoku. Juri is this uh, like illusion specialist. Like he opens up this like metal eyepiece, and if you look into his eye, you got like trapped into his illusion. He almost beat Jubei. Uh, he's one of the few in the series that actually come close to beating Jubei. Most of them just get their asses handed to them. <laughs> but he comes close, and Jubei ends up uh, beating him somehow. It's not really explained how, but he does. Even though he's still trapped in the illusion, he beats him. Uh, slashes him in half, like he does everyone. But uh, the the interesting part comes in that his sister is also one of the ninjas for the Kamon. Her name's Rengoku, and uh, she loves Jubei, like... I mean, not Jubei. Uh, she loves Juri, her brother. She loves her brother, like, more than she should. If you, if you get what I'm saying. And uh, whenever Jubei kills him, she goes on this like three episode killing spree just trying to find him. Just trying to rev to, to uh, get revenge. To try and avenge her brother's death. She wants to kill Jubei. Doesn't care about her mission anymore. Just wants to slaughter Jubei. And then she's going to kill herself and go, you know, I guess presumably to heaven. Do, do evil ninjas go to heaven? I don't know. She's going to go to the afterlife and uh, be with her brother. That's what she wants. And she becomes this really sympathetic character because all of the, everything she goes through, she keeps coming close and, you know, not quite getting it. And in the, in, in the end, she, uh, she's got this power where she can, like, rebuild herself, like, like, take parts from other people and put them on her. Like, if she loses an arm, she can, like, take someone else's arm and put it on. And she runs into this guy who has a poisonous tail, right? So if, if he hits you with the tail, you just, you know, you die of poison. So she steals the tail from the guy, makes a deal with him, betrays him, and steals the tail from him. So she's got this poisonous tail and it's hidden. Jubei doesn't know about it. She fights him and, and she thinks she's got him, right? She thinks that she's finally got her revenge and, you know, Juri will be happy in his afterlife or whatever. Turns out that 
the the dragonstone MacGuffin thing was in Jubei's pocket, and the poison stinger tail just happened to hit that exact spot. This thing is like the size of like a silver dollar. It's tiny. <laughs> and she, she thinks she's got her revenge and she just happened to hit the, the dragon stone instead. Uh, and then she dies horribly, sadly. At that point, like I said, she's a sympathetic character. She's been through so much and all she wants is, you know, she just wants her revenge so badly, you know, and you want her to get it. And she doesn't, sadly. She dies horribly. Jubei wastes her. <laughs> uh, but still, really cool arc. Really cool characters. Uh, my, the last one of my favorites was the little girl who turns out to be the witch. Uh, Jubei and the leader of the, the shogunate, Samurai, they're both on this boat traveling together. They both want the Dragonstone, but they don't have time to fight because there's this evil witch ninja on the on the boat, right, that keeps attacking them. And uh, interspersed with the witch ninja attacking, this little girl keeps showing up. And she's playing, like, you know, little kid games, like running and hide-and-seek and... She's, like, disgustingly adorable, and every time Jubei or anyone gets injured, she's like, owie, owie, go away. Like, she's, she's, like, trying to magically make the pain go away with her, you know, whatever, like, imagination. I don't know. She's she's extremely adorable, right? So she shows up, the witch shows up, she shows up, the witch gets injured, she's injured. It, it, you, you should be able to put two and two together pretty quickly. They don't. Jubei and, and Rinya and, uh, you know, uh, Daquan and all, they're all oblivious until the very end. They're trying to kill the witch and it turns out they're actually trying to kill the little girl. They don't know it at the time. But, uh, the Rinya, the leader of the Shogunate, he, uh, he's fighting Jubei again, trying to take the, the stone and the little girl runs at him to try and save Jubei and he shanks her through the fucking neck with a katana, right? <laughs> this little girl, right, who's ridiculously endearing, he just, like, like shanks her right through the throat with his giant-ass katana. And then she does that line again, like, owie, owie, go away. She's trying to make the pain go away from the giant sword sticking through her neck. <laughs> it's a really, really good scene. Uh, even though she's technically an, an, an evil ninja, right? She's actually the witch. She either doesn't know it or, like, it's a split personality or something. So the little girl is still innocent, even though technically she's the witch ninja. But, uh, yeah, when she finally goes down, Jubei loses his shit and goes at Rinya. And uh, it's just a really cool scene. It's a really, really cool character in the series. But uh, yeah, those three or four are probably my favorite. Like I guess there's a lot of other ones. There's other ones that are better in fight scenes. These are the ones that were better as far as like characters, you know, like character moments. Uh, some of the better fight scene ones, the one that where the sword is actually the ninja, that was kind of cool. Uh, he's trying to fight the guy and it turns out the sword he's holding is actually the ninja, not the, not the giant ogre guy. Uh... The werewolf in the beginning with the heart of gold or whatever. He was kind of cool. Uh, the tree spirit. The tree spirit, again, she turns out to be sympathetic. She turns out to be a good guy. She just wants to protect the stone. Uh, she ends up dying, like, straight up Jedi style. Well, not Jedi style, but she, like, she like leans against the tree. And because she's a tree spirit, she just, like, becomes a part of the tree. <laughs> uh, her character was really cool. The, uh, the guy, the guy who, like, turns into a car or, like, a motorcycle or whatever, he was interesting. He's kind of like, if you've seen the movie, he's kind of like the giant rock guy who throws the giant bladed boomerang thing. He's, like, unstoppable, or he seems unstoppable, like, you couldn't, you couldn't fight him at all. You just get your ass kicked. He's kind of like that. He just kind of leans down, puts his arms together, his arms become wheels, and he's got giant swords sticking out of the side, and they're, like, it's like a bladed chariot wheel, basically, is what it is. He just rolls around really fast and just massacres everyone. <laughs> he was pretty cool, as far as, like, the fight scene goes. Uh, the uh, the Parasite guy, they had a really good fight. Rinya and Jubei, they had really good fights. The the two leaders of the clans, the Haruko and the uh, Kimon clans, one of them's got, like, he looks like Buddha, but he's got, like, lightning rods sticking out of him, and he can shoot lightning at people. And the other one's kind of like Jubei. He shoots wind out of his sword. They have a really cool fight when they finally fight at the very end of the last episode. And uh, it turns out that they're actually brothers, which was so fucking weird. Like, in the middle of their fight, uh, Shigure makes her decision to throw away the power. Because, you know, who wants to be a god? Ooh, yeah. So she, she chucks the power and she decides to run and the whole place inexplicably decides to fucking fall apart and explode everywhere. I don't know why. But the, the two like ninja clan leader guys, in the middle of their fight, whenever she gives up their power, they just decide to pop out of the, I guess I guess their bodies were mechanical. They're the, the the giant Buddha body and like the the like white robed guy with like the face mask. Apparently the whole 
everything you see was all mechanical and not real. And then their heads like pop open mechanically and these two little dudes are like sitting inside the heads. <laughs> and they were the actual uh, clan leaders, I guess. These like one foot tall little like baby doll looking guys with big massive alien eyes. <laughs> Apparently they were the leaders of the clans and they were brothers the whole time. These clans have like been at, their th at each other's throats the whole time. One of them wants to uh, bring back the ancient civilization. The other one wants to use the power to like control the world or whatever. But their leaders the whole time were brothers and... I don't know, fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> probably a last minute decision on their part. Whoever made the, the series. But yeah, it was, it was really arbitrary and really strange. You know, just out of nowhere, their faces pop open and little guys. I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what the hell to say about that. Uh, random as hell. But yeah, it overall, I mean... It had a lot of really cool character moments, and the, the enemy ninjas were more than just fucking cannon fodder, you know? Not just obstacles to get in the way, like, ooh, I'm a bad guy, you're a good guy, I'm gonna kill you, you know? That's that's the, the extent of their development in most anime. Here they all had, you know, well, not all of them, but a lot of them had, like, secondary motivations, and they were more interesting than that. That's what saved the series, to be honest, because like I said, Jubei really isn't that interesting. You get past his random sarcasm and, you know, his unbeatable sword skills, and he's not an interesting character. He really isn't. I mean, why he's so stuck to Sugure, I have no idea. They don't even get together. They don't even end up together at the end, right? He's been following her around and rescuing her ad nauseum and protecting her and all this garbage throughout the entire series, and they never, ever get together. At the end of the series, Jubei should be dead in that last episode, but inexplicably, he's not. When the mountain collapses and he's inside, somehow he gets out. You don't even get to see the finish of the fight between him and Rinya. They're the two best swordsmen in the entire series. And the end of their fight, he gets cut off. You don't even see it. And then Jubei's just miraculously alive. It like it like cuts to this idyllic meadow with, you know, like birds chirping and shit. And he's just sitting in the meadow perfectly fine. <laughs> so, yeah, the ending, kind of stupid. Uh, but yeah, the, the enemy ninja, they really made the series, to be honest their designs and their characters uh most of the main characters i just didn't even like the monk was okay i hated the thief i hated shigure and then jubei was i don't know just there <laughs> you know so but yeah overall did i like it yeah yeah i liked it for the for the few moments that i described earlier that were really good i liked it plus it's not a very long series either it's only th 13 episodes it's 13 episodes and every episode is like 20 to 25 minutes long what is that? That's like, what, four hours or something? Something like, yeah, that's like four hours. So it, you can watch the whole thing in one afternoon. So it's not very long. And uh, the good moments were worth it, I think. Plus, there's a ton more ninjas I didn't even talk about. The one that, like, uses her hair and the one that has, like, like rodent monsters that, like, jump out of her fucking body or some shit. And, the, like, the clear guy who he's, like, he's, like, living flame inside, like, a glass body or something there's there's a million of them uh the lizard guy who who be he's the one guy that inexplicably can't be killed by jubei's super move the the wind slash thing uh the umbrella guy who like flies around and throws shit there's tons and the, the cat lady there's tons and tons of ninjas that i haven't even mentioned you know there in every single episode there's at least like three of them three new ones you know that either jubei kills or they kill each other so there's a lot to the series there's a lot of action uh, but yeah, good stuff. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I think I recommend it. I think it's good. I, I liked it. Plus, like I said, it wasn't long and, drawn, long and drawn out. It was a really short series, so all the good stuff was, you know, it didn't take long to get to. So yeah, good stuff. But uh, Ninja Scroll series, rant review. I'll see you guys next time. <clears throat> uh, she was just... Uh... <laughs> the, uh, the other main characters, Jubei. Jubei is Jubei. I mean, he's sarcastic as hell and you know, he's unbeatable with a sword, and if anything, he uses that damn wind slash too much. Uh, if you've seen Ninja Scroll the movie, when he beats the rock guy, the guy who's like, he's got like impenetrable skin, he beats him with the wind slash, he like does a backflip and like slashes his sword and the wind cuts him in half or whatever. He uses that to beat every fucking one in this series, I kid you not. Uh, at the very least, like 90% of the time, if he beats someone, one of the enemy ninja, it's with the wind slash. It's so overused. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a, another special move or something. I mean, it's that it tries to. She gets kidnapped like 500 times. Uh, it's really her only purpose throughout the entire story until the last episode. 
the last episode, her purpose changes from getting kidnapped and getting rescued to uh, a decision. Is she gonna, is she gonna open up the magical MacGuffin and become, you know, like Super Saiyan or whatever the hell? It, they're very vague about what's actually gonna happen, but apparently she's gonna get like godlike powers. This is the first big problem I have with the series. She throws it all away. After everything, after the entire series, after getting kidnapped five billion times, after all of her followers who are devoted to her, they all get massacred, after she almost dies, I don't know how many times, she just throws it all away at the end. She she finally gets to the, the ancient city or whatever, and, you know, she gets to the the chamber with the, the, like, clone of herself or whatever, and she has to make the choice, and she chooses to be normal. She's like, eh, it could be Superman, or in this case, Superwoman, but nah, nah, I think I'll just be a normal person, and, you know, get my ass kicked all over the place, and get chased, and kidnapped, and almost murdered, and that sounds like fun. I mean, superpowers, not superpowers, very difficult decision there, but, uh, yeah, she just decides to throw it all out the window at the end of the, at the end of the series. I hated her character, I really did. Uh, this ninja runs into Shigure, who's in trouble. Uh, Shigure is being pursued by two different ninja clans, and later on the shogunate, the uh, the samurai, they all want a piece of her, because she's the key to this mysterious treasure. No one knows what the treasure is. No one will be specific until the very, very end of the series. Uh, but yeah, she's, she's the key, and that's all they care about. They want her. And Jubei, for some, I don't know, Jubei reason... He decides to accompany her throughout the entire series and keep her safe and all this stuff. Even though he's a slacker and all he really wants to do is like take naps and, you know, like wander off and be a vagabond. For some reason, he sticks with Shigure the entire series and keeps her safe. Or try. Alright, hello people. I'm the dude and I just got done watching the Ninja Scroll series. Not the movie, the series. I've seen the movie. Uh, the movie is very similar to the series in feel. Got kind of a darker tone. Uh, Jubei is kind of a slacker, but... A beast with a sword. <laughs> He's unstoppable. Uh, a lot of crazy ninja designs with uh, really weird, special, amorphous, you know, bodies and abilities and craziness. Just craziness. Uh, if you like the movie, you'll like the series. That's a short version. They're, they feel very, very similar. Uh, the long version, with the spoilers, uh, the basic crux of the story is that Jubei, legendary awesome